this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take an iOS 7 walkthrough, arguably the biggest change in Apple's mobile operating system since it first came out six, seven years ago. We're going to look at it on the iPad and on the iPhone 5 now. Now, some of you can just go ahead and upgrade if you have devices that are new enough to do this, but for those of you who have older devices that aren't eligible for the upgrade, or if you're not even sure you want to go through these changes, keep watching. So here it is, iOS 7, available now for your later model Apple iOS-based products like iPad 3, the iPad 4, the iPad mini, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, and of course the brand new iPhone 5S comes with iOS 7 on there. Also the most recent genera generation iPod Touch, sorry, not the earlier iPod Touches though. So definitely the biggest change in terms of UI here, but mostly it's actually just in your general appearance, your icons particularly. Wow, flat icons, kind of freaky. Now, let's go to the built-in apps, mostly over here. You can see what they look like. Do you like those? Do you? Tell me about that. Hey, Apple used to do a very skeuomorphistic, which means it looks like a real-life thing, like the notebook binder that looked like, well, a notebook binder, Game Center. Well, that one was kind of atrocious, but they tried to make it look like a, a gaming table with the green felt and all that kind of thing. Thrown that all out of the window. They have here very flat icons, supposed to be modern. However, I don't think they're the most pretty icons. So that, that's, that's up to you to decide, too, and also up to Apple as to whether they want to change things. Uh, most icons, it's still pretty intuitive as what they are. The, the basic symbol on them hasn't changed. Videos still looks like videos. App Store still looks like the same App Store. Game Center. What a bunch of floating colored bubbles mean? I don't know what, what that's supposed to be. But once you actually launch Game Center, it's going to fill in those bubbles with your friends, your number of games. Each bubble is going to be bigger or smaller, representing that kind of thing. So I guess there's a method to the madness there. We still have our launcher dock down here on both of these guys for whatever applications you want to have down there. And obviously you can still have background wallpaper. We did an upgrade on our iPad with Retina display. That's the iPad 3 here, not the very latest generation. And on our iPhone 5, respected all those settings, kept them. There's this new funny little motion thing going on here, and you can disable that. If if you tilt it around, the icons will shift a little bit. See, it's very subtle. You're barely going to notice it because I'm moving it, but uh, interesting little visual touch there. If the really important features that make life better on iOS, and these are things we've been hoping to see for a long time, are universal access to important settings over here. Now, this is, again, not the most aesthetically wild thing we've ever seen here, but it gets the job done. We have airplane mode right here, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Night mode, do not disturb, and rotation lock right there, and we can control our brightness right here on the screen. How handy is that? Playback controls and volume, and then we have shortcuts right here to our alarm clock to a flashlight function using the back flash on it. Camera right there, and this one takes us to calculator. So mostly appreciate not having to back out of an application. Nothing drove me crazier than I'm in a web browsing session. I just really want to change my brightness or something like that. And I got to go and go home, go to settings, do that, come back to my Safari experience. Gone. Good times. Nice stuff right there. And if you swipe down from the top, you get notifications here. You get the date, you get the weather underneath. Text-based only, no little pretty stuff. Any calendar appointments that you have are here. Any emails, your stock information, also available there. Handy, and you can have just for today, or you can have all, and just things that you missed. So that's handy for phone calls that you missed, emails you haven't seen, that kind of thing. So very nice, very well done. Lastly, the very important thing here is multitasking. I'm going to show you on the big screen here. Double tap on the home key, and instead of getting that kind of sad representation of multitasking, here we have, look at that, everything that's running right here. Does that remind you of WebOS? Yes, that's because it's just exactly like WebOS. And if you don't want to get rid of something, you just swipe it up. Totally WebOS, but hey, that was one of the best features of WebOS. So if you're going to rip something off, take the best you can get. So there is no dismiss all, unfortunately, and you grab the card by its center to get rid of it just like that. But in most cases, people probably don't want to close everything. If you do, you're going to reboot your phone if you want to do that. Notification bubbles, still pretty much the same thing. You get your little red number indicator up there. Otherwise, it's business as usual, just with flatter icons. One other important thing is that the keyboard has changed. It really, functionally, is largely the same. What's changed is the look. It's also gotten flatter. So here we are in a note. 
And here's our new flat keyboard right here. Again, the layout is the same. It, it's, it's really largely a cosmetic change right there, though it's pretty neat that some applications can now put up appropriate shortcuts above the top of the keyboard. Now, here's the tricky and weird thing. Not all applications get the new keyboard. Who would ever think there would be more than one keyboard built into the operating system, right? Well, in fact, if you use an older application that has not been updated for iOS 7, you're going to see the older keyboard. So let's open up a non-updated application. We'll look at Polaris Office, which hasn't been updated yet. And here we have, you see, the old style keyboard is still there. So that's a little bit weird, a little bit iffy. I hear that Pages has not gotten the updated keyboard yet, Apple's own Pages application, and the numbers isn't seeing the on-screen keyboard of any sort. So hopefully by tomorrow, Apple will have an update out for that. When you first set up your iPad or your iPhone with the new OS, or if you're buying a new iPhone 5S, when it walks you through that, first it's going to ask you about iCloud, if you want to enable iCloud features. Then it's going to implore you to enter a PIN or a password. You don't have to do that. There's a skip if you want, don't want to do that. But that's pretty important for the iPhone 5S because it has that fingerprint scanner there. So once you've actually entered in a PIN or passcode, you can then train it to use your finger so you never have to bother actually entering that. Again, quick way of keeping your phone locked up safe and just for you. Nice feature. Between that and Find My iPhone, where if you ever really do lose it, you can declare it lost. And nobody else can activate it with iOS 7. Good stuff there. But what about those other features? What if you don't want some of them? What if you have some security-minded things going on? Because in the lock screen, I'll show you right here, we'll turn it off. There is actually access to stuff over here and notifications as well. So what if you don't want people seeing what your latest email is? You can go into Notification Center right here. You can turn notifications in Today View on and off completely if you want to. And you can choose which items are actually shown here in Today View. For example, Next Destination, your calendar, your reminders, your stocks, how they're sorted, what to include. So you can disinclude some things here if you don't want them to show up in Notifications, for example. Amber Alerts on and off. And all of that is for controlling the access on your lock screen, as you can see here. And for Control Center, access within apps on and off. So if the swiping up from the bottom is bugging you, you actually don't want to have that happen because maybe the program has another feature that takes advantage of the bottom area of the screen. You can turn that off. And you can turn off access on the lock screen. If you don't want anybody changing anything, turning your Wi-Fi off, your kid's kind of bored, picks up your phone, and before you know it, you're using mobile data when you didn't mean to, you can actually turn these features off. For our cellular data settings, things are pretty straightforward here. You can turn, turn your cellular data on and off. You can enable or disable LTE. We're using the AT&T version right now, by the way. Data roaming on and off, and you can use the personal hotspot, which uses your phone as a wireless hotspot for a tablet or a laptop that does not have a 3G or 4G connection. Another little UI change right here. I thought this one was kind of odd at first. You can see right up here we have our AT&T, because that's our, our carrier right there. And instead of the signal bars that are used on every other phone in the world, we've switched to dots. At first, when we had to reactivate the phone after upgrading, it looked like it was doing dot, 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 working on it, not getting there yet. That's what we thought that meant. But now this is actually your signal bars now. The Wi-Fi signals has, has stayed the same, the symbol for that. But yeah, just a little UI change there. Also new for Siri is boy Siri, bro Siri. Right here, gender, you can go from your favorite Siri lady to your new Siri guy friend and we'll see what he sounds like what time is it it's 3:50 p.m. he's not too bad sounding actually what's apple stock price Youthful, friendly, a little bit less robotic maybe than Girl Siri. Before on the iPhone for Spotlight Search, you used to sw swipe all the way on either one of these to the end, and uh, now nothing happens. So what do you do instead? You actually grab the drawer down, and you search like that from any screen that you're in. Lastly, there's camera enhancements. Still overall a minimalist UI. Apple doesn't give you a lot of settings, but they always give you a good shot and a good quality video there. So we have HDR on and off, and these are just touch controls right there. Same thing for the flash, switching your cameras. There's our access to the photos that we've taken. There's our giant record button. 
Check this out. We got a bunch of filters, Instagrammy style things with little previews of how it's going to look for each one in real time. When you're done, you just tap that symbol again. And then you can swipe through the bottom here between video mode, photo mode, square picture for all you people who need avatars, panorama. And then we've got the whole swiping around thing we can do with this. So some actual new features for the camera too, kind of nice. So far, speed and stability with both our iPad 3, which isn't even the latest generation, and our iPhone 5 have been very good. As always, very responsive, no problem here. Nothing this OS is doing is really demanding. If anything, this is less graphically demanding in terms of what's being rendered on the screen here. You've got a couple of effects, like again, the, the tipping it and the icons kind of slide back and forth. But and that, nothing too demand, demanding going on. Now, a lot of applications have not been updated for iOS 7. Generally speaking, uh, the only thing that really means is you're going to see the older style keyboard. There's a couple of applications that might have problems. Nook sent out an email saying that don't change orientation while you're reading a book because it might crash the application, for example. So you may see some minor glitches like that, but so far we haven't seen any application that just flat out really didn't work correctly. So that's Apple's latest mobile operating system, iOS 7, available now for late model devices and of course on the new iPhone 5S and you can put it on your iPad 3, your iPad 4, your iPad mini, iPhone 4, iPhone 4 as you get the idea right there. And yeah, there's a lot of improvement here. There's a lot of stuff people have been asking for. So I would hardly recommend upgrading, even if the icons are a little meh. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for reviews of the latest iPhone and iPad products. And don't forget to hit that like button.